Welcome to the Real Estate Debate, where we debate the hottest topics in San Diego real estate. Let's meet today's panelists. Our first guest is Chip Grant, broker owner at San Diego Properties. Our second guest, Sonia Azizi, real estate agent for Whistle Realty. Guest number three, Phil Green, broker owner at The Green Group. And guest number four, Jason Cardos, broker owner at Mount Helix Lifestyles Real Estate Services. And now, here is your host for the real estate debate, Derek Evans. All right, it's time for the real estate debate. You guys excited? So excited. All right, let's do it. So topic number one, tell me whether you agree or disagree, and then of course, why, and Jason, we are gonna start with you. Okay. Topic number one is, Removal of contingencies, it's too risky for buyers, but has become way too common in this competitive marketplace. I, I agree, it, it, it can be risky, yes, um, uh, but I'm currently in a transaction with some clients, um, so every, everything depends on the situation, right? But they've been looking for years, they want to, they're renting now and they want to keep their uh, son in a school district in the Del Cerro area. So there's a certain com- condo complex and we've been, uh, beat out by offers uh, for different reasons and so one just came on the market now uh, so they have a good feel of the complex they know why they want to buy there the values so in this situation we are keeping contingencies but it's a multiple counter offer and uh, we have a strong lender and they're gonna uh, they, we just counter back today so I'll know later on hopefully uh, that they're removing their appraisal contingency mm. uh, so they still have their inspection, their loan contingency, but in this instance, uh, they put in an offer for four hundred thousand, uh, and they're prepared to go up to four hundred six thousand. But well, don't tell anyone. Uh, yeah. Well, I didn't. I didn't. Yeah, sorry. I didn't say the address or name. But nobody's I mean, on the other side of that, are they? No. So, uh, it, so it's important. But uh, here, we we still have contingencies. But uh, for me, uh, liability. I want to make sure the clients understand what's going on, and I, I feel like they have a reason. So, so you disagree. Uh, I, well, that was the thing. I was going <laughs> to say no, but then again, they are important as long as you know how to use them. Uh, so we are removing one because of cash offers. Uh, they're using an FHA loan, Federal Housing Administration, so they don't want to look uh, weak or uh, if the appraisal comes in less, they don't want the seller to think uh, that they're going to try to lower the price there. Okay. Uh, they have conviction, which gave me conviction to advise them as long as they know, then you know, here's how. Chip, is this con- is this conviction dangerous? Um, I think I agree that buyers can enter into transactions, uh, eliminating some of the contingencies that we have standard in the transaction. I think the number one we have to be confident with is the loan contingency, separate from the appraisal contingency. I don't think a buyer should enter the market unless they know they can get a loan. Uh, escrow period is not to figure out if I can get a loan or what kind of loan I'm going to get. Escrow is to clear title to find out what the property is all about, get the disclosures, get the appraisal done, close the deal. So there are contingencies which we can uh, properly counsel our clients into uh, with good confidence, remove those or at least shrink them down. We have a contingency standard on our forms, 17 days for inspection. Somebody writes a 21 day escrow and you have 17 days hanging there, doesn't look good, doesn't work right. (laughs) We need buyers to be able to walk into a home and say, I can get in and out of there in seven days, and we can always approach a seller and say on day seven, if that property didn't inspect, can I have two more days? Uh, but we should cinch things up to be more realistic, I think. Okay, that makes sense. Sonia, what do you think about all this? Um, what I think is you should hire me as an agent, and you don't have any problems with <laughs> contingencies. Um, what I do with my clients, because I know it's a, com- a you know competitive market, is I do the inspections prior to even writing an offer. I do everything. So I take everything off because when you have 10 offers on the table, then you're, you know, the person that's going to remove all their contingencies. And that's one thing I ask. I'm a listing agent as well as a buyer's agent. And to me, it's important to remove all your contingencies because I don't want my, I mean, I work for my clients and I'm going to go with the best offer. And so I do my um, home inspections ahead of time. And what agent wouldn't like that? Say, hey, before I write my offer, do you mind if we go in, we're willing to put in like five, six hundred dollars, we're going to do the inspection, do our due diligence, and that's how I get my offers accepted. I remove all contingencies and I work with a group of lenders that they're already DU approved. 
So they're good to go. And so you remove the contingencies, but you do the work ahead of time. So you still I do, do the, the work. work ahead of time. So okay. that's what I mean. Like most agents are af uh, afraid to do that and they think it's a risk, but do your due diligence, get your buyers approved, get your home inspection done because most agents, they're not, they're not gonna look at offers, especially with today's market. They're not gonna accept an offer the first five days. They're gonna see who's the best offer, who's gonna be the, you know. So you have five days to get all that stuff done. And if you have buyers you're working with, I absolutely think that you should. I mean, I'm assuming everybody's going through their lenders and um, they're doing the loan approval, do you approval, all that good stuff. Well, so. I don't know. <laughs> they should. That's why I said hire me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> good stuff. All right, Phil, what do you think? So I'm going to disagree that okay. I think it's risky for buyers. Okay, so you don't think uh, it's risky? I don't. If you have a savvy agent that knows what they're doing and protects their client. Um, we work with a lot of investor clients. And right now in this competitive marketplace, to get your offer accepted, you get a 30-minute window to go in there, view the home, you know, write a seven-day cash offer, no contingencies, non-refundable deposit. And that's what you have to do to win a deal. Now, obviously, if you're working with um, a regular you know, client that's buying a home like a first-time home buyer, um, I wouldn't advise that. But you can definitely tighten up the contingency periods, which makes your offer a lot stronger and we just closed the deal in 19 days. You know, the seller accepted our offer because it was quick, it closed quickly. We did all our due diligence, our client was happy, and we won the deal. So I wanna tell you guys all that this was sort of a trick question, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> because I mean, well, what's, the, what's the worst that you can lose if you're a buyer? And Your earnest money deposit. The, yeah, yes. so that's the worst case scenario, right? Yeah. They can't force you to take the house. They can't force you to buy the house. Correct. So if you know that is your risk, and you know, you know, okay, we put down five thousand or ten thousand or whatever it is, and you run into a major issue along the way, whatever that is. That's the maximum amount of risk you have. So if you're buying a six hundred thousand dollar house, you're not risking six hundred thousand. You're just risking your five or ten thousand or whatever it is that you put down as your earnest money. So it's not a trick question, but it's one of those things where I think a, a lot of people believe there's there's more risk involved with the contingencies than there than there is. There's not as much risk involved in removing the contingencies as people think there is. Therefore, it is a competitive advantage opportunity because some people aren't educated in it or some people are not willing to explain to the home buyer that, hey, your worst case scenario is this goes away. That's the worst case scenario. Um, but the, well, maybe that or we don't get the house, depending upon you know what's more important to you. So which one is it? Which one's more important? You know, risking this five grand or 10 grand or not get in this house. And, and I think that was a story I was trying to explain with my, <laughs> my yeah, they, they were willing to risk it because of the issues they had before. They knew they wanted that complex. So, and, and like you were saying, it, uh, the deposit, there's no rule for that. It's uh, usually about 1% of the purchase price is what in the industry people like to see. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But then you got VA buyers that they say, I, I, I don't have to put any money down. And I tell them that's true, but the seller still wants to see a little skin in the game, especially, you know, in, in our area in San Diego County in a competitive market. So yeah, you still got to pay your closing costs. Yes, the closing costs. And, and what you were hitting on was the uh, the fancy word is the liquidated damages. So it, uh, it's a uh, well the the amount of deposit they put down or three percent, uh, whichever is uh, uh, of, of the purchase price, whichever is uh, you know greater or so mm -hmm. that. In a litigation in, situation. Yeah, and the reason they do that is because they say it's, it's so hard to determine, you know, did you harm the seller, the buyer, so they try to make it streamlined with that, that clause. Okay. And that's what you were yeah, referring to. Exactly. There. What's the worst case scenario? So it's important to understand what's risk reward in every situation, right? What are you risking? What's the potential reward? And that's all you really, the only analysis you need to do is the risk reward analysis every time. So figure out what's best for you. In a mm -hmm. tough market like this, it makes sense, I think, for a lot of people to remove some of these contingencies, especially if you have one that you can hang on to. You can hang on to that loan contingency, or if you can hang on to that appraisal contingency, or whatever it is. If there's one you can hang on to, inspection, whatever, then at least you've got some sort of rope there, you know, so that you can say, all right, you know, we've got some sort of parachute. What? All right. And I'm sorry, and then that was right too. As long as you have one contingency on, so it could be loan, appraisal, you're right. I think buyers aren't just shorten sure. it up. Yeah, just so. do a five day. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, that's an extra five days that you're buying. But but they're looking for days. the full contingency removal. So uh, like you touched on, yeah. As long as they yeah. have one, they still have an outer. So yeah, that's Something. important. Yeah. Something. Yeah. It shows value, but you don't have to give away the farm, mm -hmm. so to speak. 
All right, time for our second topic. This is our seller topic. Phil, we will be starting with you. The topic is, if you plan to sell in the next few years, now is a good time to do so because who knows how long this hot market will last. Do you agree or disagree with that, Phil? I'd agree. And the reason I'd agree is we're seeing the highest prices right now that we've seen since 2006. That's 11 years. This is the highest price we've had in the market for 11 years, which is a long time. So if you need to sell, it's a great time to sell. Now, will the market continue to go up? Well, that's a great question. I guess no one really knows. If you look at past market cycles, um, normally the previous high gets passed, and it's happened every single time. And have we passed the highest 2005 highs? No, we haven't yet. So I guess that could lead one to conclude that the market will probably continue to go up. But we don't know. There's a lot of outside factors, uh, the political spectrum that's going on right now, and, and several other things that could affect the value of homes. Yeah, no question. And loans, too, and interest rates. There's all sorts of things out there. Sonia, what do you think? I mean, if you're going to sell, you know, in the next year or two years, why wait? I mean, you, what we know is the market today. We know that it's good. We, we know it's doing well. Um, why not sell now? Um, again, it's summertime. That's what I tell my clients. It's summer. Uh, it's the hottest market. And also, sell before November. We, we don't know what's going to happen with the elections. It could go both ways. But if you're going to sell, why not do it when the market's doing well? Um, I don't know. I can't predict. Nobody can predict. But I do know the market now. So it's a good time. Good. The sell. market's good. Good for yeah. sellers. Okay. That makes sense. Chip, what do you think? It's always a good time to sell in Southern California. Uh, even in down markets, uh, Southern California has exceeded national market statistics. Uh, right now is a good time to sell. Uh, Someone has to have a more than a reason of making money to sell. Uh, you don't want to wait until there's increased competition, other sellers. So sometimes it is a good idea to wait until the fall or wait until early spring so there's not a lot of other sellers competing for that same buyer. But there sure seems to be a lot of buyers right now, more than sellers, even at this peak time. Uh, so this is an excellent time to sell, I think, with any product. And it's the seller's market. That's why it's called that. Time to sell. <laughs> time, time to sell. What can I say? I love it. Jason, where do you uh, fall on this one? Yes, they all, all great points they brought up. And um, the, the other thing is, why, why are they selling? Like Chip was saying, uh, is it just the money or the time of their life? Uh, are they downsizing? Um, another thing is uh, tax uh, liability rules. There's a IRC 121 where if you live in a home two out of five years, um, you can get any gain uh, tax free. Uh, well, there's some stip you know single no person two hundred fifty thousand yeah. capital. Yeah, married five hundred thousand, but that comes up sometimes. People have moved. I work with people that move out of town and they've had their rental for a couple years. This time, I'm having a lot of tenants moving out, and so landlords are thinking, well, maybe you know they're either going to rent it out or you know might be good to try to sell it right now. Sonia, I think you made the uh, a great point about uh, hey, when you you know it's a seller's market. Right. You know it's a good time to sell, maybe why risk it? But there's also pretty much everybody, mm -hmm. I think, believes that this market's not done yet. So this is the tough part. Like I, don't, I haven't heard a soul saying this market's going to crash next mm -hmm. year. Uh, it's getting weak out there. You know, there's properties that are sitting on the market. We're not hearing any of those signals yet. So what would you tell someone who's a home seller that goes, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just go ahead and take the risk because I think this market's going to keep going up. But if everybody's yeah. thinking like them, um, then that means that all those people are going to wait. Right now, what we know is there's a ton of buyers. There's less inventory. If you're going to sit there, wait for 5% to go up, why not sell it for 5% more when there's low inventory? So that's what I would say to them. Okay. Sell it for higher now because all we're running into is multiple offers. You think just list it higher? Just list it a little bit higher. I mean, I've seen some crazy stuff. I mean, $25,000 above the market, 50000 so do you want to wait to get that 5% or you can get that extra 5% and not risk the market, just do it now. That's an interesting idea. You know? What do you think about that, Phil? I think if I was someone who didn't have a great need to sell, I would tell them to hold on. I really think the market's going to keep increasing and I don't see a great amount of inventory flooding the market anytime soon. I think there'll be even greater demand next year. Yeah. Um, there really isn't many homes that are coming up. There's a few new build developments here in San Diego, but not much. There's not much more land. Yeah. So I don't see the inventory problem really becoming better anytime soon. I think prices are going to continue to go up. And if I didn't have a great need to sell, I'd hold on. Okay. And then um, you give them their number, and then I'll go do a listing appointment with them. 
And, okay. I mean, there's, there's quite a few people that want to live in California. Look at the Bay Area. Look at Marin County, Orange County, LA. Those are way pricier than San Diego. They end up down here in this little cul-de-sac of the country. And this is a delightful community. We're far less than other large communities in San Diego. Lots of jobs available. High tech is coming back to this county. We're no longer the educational and military town we may have been when I came here in the 70s. This is telecom, this is biotech, this is a big city, lots of money coming through. Uh, no urgent reason to sell right away uh, because there's going to be steady demand on California property. Yeah, we've seen, uh, it's been incredible. Statewide. It's become an international destination. Right. Too, it is, basically. statewide. You see a lot of money coming in from all parts of the globe. Okay. But those people, Derek, I mean, the people that are selling, they're also buying something else. Right. So if we tell them to wait and take that risk, you know, either way, I mean, they have to buy another property. So if the time is, uh, you know, if they wait another year or two years, the prices of that new property that they're going to get is going to go up too. Yeah. So. I guess it depends on if you're moving up or moving down. Right. That's, that's kind and, of an important and where you're moving. Yeah, where the you location moving? you may be going to could yeah. make a difference. Yeah, inland yeah. versus coastal. We see a lot of people doing Out that. of state versus staying. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's very, very important too because I think you're right. It's not just about the sell side. That's a huge point. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's the biggest trouble, the catch-22, right, for sellers today. Where do you go? Where am I going? Yeah. And we can sell the house tomorrow for 20000 above the appraised value. Right. Where are we going to sleep? You know, in a hot market, you think that won't fly, but on, on some of these, well, higher price ones, uh, the buyer and seller, they're, they're willing to work out uh, renting back. I had one rent back for a month before their other home was ready. So um, I am seeing that too, where maybe you could have the best of both worlds. Yeah, I have yeah, like least. three or four contingent deals going on right now. Most of my Which deals is, are like this buy, guy's yeah. buying this, this. So mm -hmm. they are moving. They're either moving up or moving down, but. Some sellers are, you know. the intrepidation is like where, where we go. Uh, there are buyers that will willingly go into escrow, take a back seat, let the seller have 30 days, find where you want to go. I want your house. I got your house over the other guys that didn't get it. Go find something. Mm -hmm. And I've done a couple of them this year recently. Uh, one was like the 30th day, uh, but the buyer uh, got what they wanted. They were a seller, now they're a buyer, and they got what they wanted. So it made sense to sell. It wasn't surely just about the sale, about where we're going to go. And, there's buyers are willing to wait for sellers to find that right property at Uplake. Yeah, that might be a really good tip for buyers in this market to write that in. You know, hey, we're willing to wait. If you don't have a place to land, that is a good tip. We will wait. Great stuff. Thank you all so much for being here Thank today. We really appreciate us. your time. That was a fantastic real estate debate. And we will do it again, same time, same channel next month. We'll see you then.